All right, so um, yeah, let's watch Inside Star Citizen. It's called Oops All Sprint Report 3, Spring 2022. But before we do, uh, because this is going to go up on YouTube, if you guys do want to support the channel, support me in any way, the channel is sponsored by HelloFresh. So if you guys want to do that, if you're in Twitch chat, exclamation point, hello, hello fresh. If you're watching the YouTube video, it'll be in the link below. You can use POG SC7222 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts off across six boxes. So there you go. Make sure uh, if you want to support the channel, they check out HelloFresh. Uh, and thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring the channel. Um, it's been kind of cool. So I appreciate it. Um, but... Without further ado, we have an ISC to check out. So let's see what's going on. Hopefully it's not all environmental sprint reports and it's an actual sprint report. We'll see. I actually haven't seen it yet. We're here. It's cold. It might start raining. And this is an all sprint report episode. So let's get to it. Last sprint report we showed some of the earliest work the AI team was doing to make the landings of AI pilots more realistic and natural and less uh, direct and unvaried. So let's check in again this week on more of their continued still work in progress progress. It would only be natural if he landed right on that pole and was like sideways like me. You can see here a focus on new safe procedural spline generation which uses an iterative process to apply repulsive and spring forces to each control point based on the various sign distance fields in the area. The white line seen here is the original direct flight path, and the scion is what's being generated automatically by this new AI process. Okay, so everybody in Discord, I saw them talking about scion. He, he, said, he just said cyan wrong, right? And, and Bucha literally turned it into a, a conspiracy theory. This new tech is essential in allowing designers to add NPC reinforcements to a variety of mission locations where spawn closets might be too conspicuous or otherwise unavailable. And yeah. it should add an exciting element of added danger and variation to missions throughout the persistent universe, enabling new mission types and alternate outcomes to existing ones when player action or inaction can cause a good situation to go bad or an already intense one to get even worse. Okay, so this is something where I I put this caveat every single time they talk about AI in the monthly report and everything. Yes, will this allow um, for new mission types and all those things? Probably. Are they going to be good? Uh, probably not, because the AI can't even, you know, walk around, uh, an outpost right now, let alone do more complicated things like these. So I really don't get, like, while this looks amazing and, like, the implications that Jared said are all true, yeah, it's not with current server performance. And when is server performance going to improve? We don't even know if it will. Right, because the everything is is being hinged on server meshing and all these other things, and we and the and we don't even know how well it's going to improve any server tick rates or anything like that. So, in the end, I I look at this and I go, cool, but it's kind of hard to get excited for because I don't expect it to work even when they implement it. You know, and that's just, it, it is what it is for right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, is, is this important? Massively. This is the most, probably one of the most important things for a game like this is we need, we need NPC. First off, you need just the world to feel alive, period. They make all these beautiful planets, all these things, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't feel alive. It feels literally dead. So if there's not things flying around, whether they're real players or NPCs, the world feels dead. It doesn't feel alive. Very important for that. But then on top of that, hey, I need help. I need a pickup. I need all these things. We can't always rely on other players for those things. NPCs being there to aid you or uh, reinforce and make uh, other missions more difficult, super, super important. So 
Yeah, uh, it's all really important, and and that's exciting. But I just have so much skepticism over these because it just look at the state of the game's AI. It it's awful. And beyond just AI reinforcements to the situation, these kinds of NPC landings and takeoffs are an exciting step forward in building a more immersive universe with ship traffic coming and going from the various landing zones, points of interest, space stations, and beyond. It's been on the wish list for a while, and it's exciting to me to see this tech beginning to realize its full potential. It's still, it's, it's not big. Okay, you can work on this tech all you want, but it doesn't see its full potential without you actually making server meshing, and nobody knows if you can. And in additional AI immersion like news, we are work is it. also being done to randomize non hero NPC movement speeds, which you can see here. Just another way the team is working to create a believable environment of characters in Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe. It's actually pretty smart. That. That one in the middle looks based on me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> We've also got an update on AI collision avoidance tech we showed before, making AI even more polite by now being able to detect conversations going on between players and characters and avoid passing between them, which, which is nice. And then there's this new AI interaction that doesn't really need to be explained, does it? So yum, so wow. Switching over to PU characters for a bit, the team continues to concept out additional looks for their Frontier clothing line, pushing for greater Those variety really cool. while still maintaining a recognizable theme throughout. These paper doll displays were made with a focus on utility and a read for survival out in the wilderness. And you can see here, variants for more extreme environments oh, with these like potential these. cold weather options. This one is super We also weird have looking. this look at some non-hero assets being explored for minor NPCs and the like, with the addition... I'm just looking for the clothing I'll be wearing in-game. I don't know, this one's pretty neat. ...of overalls, vests, and something I think we could use a little bit more of in the Persistent Universe, you and like in the real life one? in general, yeah. ponchos. Yeah, like let's this, roll with some more ponchos. Of course, this is your regular reminder that concepts are an exploration of ideas, and showing them is not an acknowledgement or commitment that any of these will arrive in game. We create these to discover the things that we like and don't like. Also, Ian is really good at FPS combat. That doesn't really apply to anything, he just wants more folks to know. Members of the Planet Content and EU Sandbox teams recently started a sprint exploring new cave archetypes and entrances beyond the rocky ones that we currently have, as you can see here with this early gray box look at a sand type of cave currently being explored. I mean, that looks pretty sick, <laughs> but what do we do there? And now that we've got our first river on Microtech, Work's begun on building out a new library of underwater flora, as you can see here, with these river weeds. River weeds, that's what they're called, right? And then, before we head into Invictus launch week next week, let's take a look at a vehicle you already know about currently in production, and let's take a look at a vehicle that we're gonna raise in price and sell to you at Invictus launch week. Check in with the popular Corsair. First ship from Drake Interplanetary being taken to our current gold standard. This is the mess hall, which includes a slight change from concept to improve player traversal. Why are there Originally, the Originally, the entrance lift came up between two in turrets, ship. but in white box testing, that caused a noticeable traffic jam, especially during intense situations. The entrance lift now comes up in a sealed cubby off of the mess hall and allows for improved traversal throughout the remainder of the ship. But the real hotness is in the cockpit, with a look at these dashboards currently making their way through final art phase. Just, wow. I really want to push every button. And finally, before we let you go, a little tease of something we'll be discussing more as it gets closer to release, changes to ground vehicle physics that are currently being tested, 
iterated on, passed out to vehicle designers for feedback, tested again, iterated again, passed on again, etc, etc, etc. What you see on the left is the current arcade-style movement found in the Persistent Universe today. And on the right, a more physically-based movement system we're so calling internally uh, physical movement. Because I know, I know, we're really good at naming things. The goal of adopting a more physically-based movement system will be obvious. We want our vehicles to behave more like we'd expect them to. And that means getting a more natural vehicle response from the environment without the gliding that's currently caused by the arcade simulation on the left. This physics work would also extend to going up enormous hills. Like you can see on the left with arcade, you can currently stop and maintain traction, which is <laughs> neat for looking at sunsets, sure. But in a physically based system, you'll need to consider the speed, momentum, and the actual path you take just a little more carefully. This change is also going to affect the way ground vehicles do just about everything, including fall tremendous distances as well. You can see on the left here, the arcade model, it tends to correct the Ursa the entire way down, but the physically based model is a bit less forgiving. Did they throw also, it down you the can jail see thing? They've been testing a lot. <laughs> That's funny. And I know I said finally for the physics thing, but maybe we can squeeze one more teaser in this week, huh? What's nah, this? Dude. No. This is something we're definitely going to be learning more about as we get closer to its release. Look at how happy he sounds. Do I have to bring up the concept art? It's a new kind of pew pew. So here, okay. Obviously, this is work in progress. It doesn't. I don't think it looks that good. But here's what I take issue with: is I did buy the Vulture. It's it's. I think it's one of the last ships that I purchased for real money. The concept art does have lasers at the end, but the lasers, like, broke things up, and then it came through these, like, shield-looking things. And it kind of looked like it would break down the metal or whatever into little pieces, and then they would go into the ship. Kind of the reason... Yeah, like, they were... It, it, they were cutting lasers. These aren't really that. So... I don't like it. I don't like this. Bring up the, the concept here. Let me see if I can find it. Drake Vulture. Here it is. So this was kind of the reason why I purchased the ship. Um, like, seriously, was that I knew that I saw the lasers, but I really, this is what sold me on it. Was Honestly, was this. I was like, oh, that is so cool. And I was like, okay, well, we have mining lasers. I These are basically mining lasers, was how I looked at it. And they just cut things, or they were cutting lasers. And then... This was the actual salvage process. This is why I say hull stripping isn't salvage, because it's hull stripping. It's part of salvage, but it isn't salvaging to me. It was like, look, it all goes into this bin in here. Now what happens? It just gets sucked in v via the laser. It's, again, it's concept art, and I got debated by the concept art again. And this is why, like... Don't buy concept ships, like, all these things, because you don't know what's going to happen later, right? All this stuff could come later, but I don't, I don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like it, and I don't have to like it. Um, yeah, for, for me, the redeeming points of the ship don't exist, and that's just me.
Um, so it, it just bummed me out, guys, and and that's it. That's how I feel. Is is that just kind of bummed me out a bit because I I really was excited for for this ship, and I was really really excited for the the way it seemed like it was going to function and now it's not so yeah it's kind of a bummer man cool so what did we learn i will say that it looks like each laser is being um moved it's a new by kind an of individual PPU. axis kind of right so cool Converging point? Maybe not. Scrapper beam name. Five SCU a second. I don't know. There's no like how much is in the hole. I it's this is a weird process, man. It's still made function like that, but not for hull stripping. I mean, the image is literally stripping a hull. So, you know, s smoke all the copium you want, but they they continuously just make lasers because it's easy. But then, yeah, I I I bought Star. Here's the deal. I bought Star Citizen, not because it was pretty. I bought Star Citizen because it sounded like the systems were going to be, like, complex and really cool. And now they put lasers on everything. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that AI content, Maybe feature, and tech this? teams continue to make strides that will not only make the Precision Universe more immersive, but unlock new opportunities for mission designers when reinforcements come online that features old and new like caves and rivers respectively continue to be iterated on and improved. And say what you will about Drake, their dashboards are just so tactile. Now don't forget that Invictus launch week begins next week and over the next two weeks, we'll be right back here learning more about all the new vehicles making their debut at this year's event. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. This is the new Manchester office still under construction and we'll see you all here next week. All right. I'm I'm really disappointed. I don't know what to say, man. I'm just I'm really disappointed in the way it looks and the way it it might function. This is how I feel. I was really hoping it was going to be something special right like here's here's the deal here's the deal you wait years for salvage right we've been waiting years for salvage and what did you get you got the extraction laser from a mining ship so what you got You got mining. Yeah. All right, this is the Drake Vulture Q&A. Here's a, a couple interesting questions. Um, if intact components will typically be more valuable for low volume salvages versus compressed scrap, and the Vulture can only secure those items by pilot EVA, why would players find the Vulture more desirable uh, to use for light salvage instead of better of a better defended and or cheaper fighter craft light hauler like the Hornet Colors Freelancer? Component salvaging is only one part of the salvage career, and while any ship could technically do this, the Vulture is equipped with the whole process uh, scrapping, processing, and ship breaking. 
which will maximize profit from your trips versus grabbing components alone. The Vulture and other salvage ships, just as a reclaimer, come equipped with dedicated salvage scanners that allow you to identify components in their states. Yeah, like none of this is a thing yet, okay? So, while you could strip every item out of the abandoned ship of a Cutlass, 90% of it could be such low value that the Vulture owner will return essentially the same end profit by only grabbing 10% identified as worthwhile. Um... Given the initial Vulture Contract Community voted opponent salvaging, we processed through concepts, came clear it wasn't particularly interesting or fulfilling role for the ship. Uh, as such, we decided to make the Vulture more rounded introduction to salvage covering all the basic principles. Okay. Since the Vulture requires some manual cutting of scrap, will it come with the requisite hand tools or those that have purchased separately? Every Vulture comes equipped with a multi-tool, which can be used for welding and cutting objects alongside a full complement of salvage charges. I, I don't know. Everything's kind of vague here. So, I don't really see anything. That, like, really sticks out, but, yeah. Again, I'm pretty sad. Well, in, in the end, the devs have defended these laser things for a while, and it just is what it is. Yeah, here, we'll look at the, the ship sale page as well. Drake's proprietary Ripper utility mount is what makes the Vulture self-sufficient salvage, out, out, salvage machine outfitted with a fully integrated industrial-grade scrapper beam systems lets you rip and strip like a pro without leaving the comfort of your cockpit. I mean, it seems like we have the strip and not the rip. Uh, for the moment, right? Again, this was the image that sold me on the ship. So... Industrial grade scrapper rig. Now, what do these do? Industrial grade integrated tractor beams. So these were tractor beams that pulled in the stuff. So all that the okay, so all these things did was actually pull the stuff in. And the ripper lasers or whatever were the things that broke everything up. Yeah, maybe they'll add it in salvage tier one. I think that's that's gonna be the main question is um what it, what is uh, th that's what I would just ask. And I would feel a lot more comfortable if, if they answered it pretty honestly or whatever. Is um I'd like to read this brochure if possible. The Ripper Squad is outfitted with an integrated tractor rig designed especially for the Vulture. Industrial grade tractor moves proprietary beam configuration makes it more powerful. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I just... I, I would ask, like, what's the next step from here? But then again, um... Why should we believe them, right? So you, you, everything changes when it actually goes into development. It's not that they're lying. It's that literally everything changes. So 
Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well. Threw that money away, I guess. <laughs>